Today let's talk about how to reduce your probate fees and this isn't going to matter for a lot of Canadians but it will matter for anybody that lives in Ontario, BC or Nova Scotia and based on you know COVID and what I kind of expect to happen I would assume that eventually the government is going to start charging people more for the assets that they're passing down to the next generation through their estates. There's probably going to be an inheritance tax put in at some point in time. But for now, let's just talk about probate and how to reduce them. Um, well, first, I guess you need to know what probate is. Probate is very simple. It is the process. It's the legal process where the assets in your state after you pass away have to go through the court system and make sure that all of your liabilities are paid, all the assets are there, then it's going to figure out, you know, how much taxes do you owe and then is are the assets distributed correctly to the beneficiaries? It's a whole huge process. If you've had anybody that you were in a, a beneficiary inside of their will, you know that it takes a long time from finding out when there's the assets that are supposed to come to you to once it actually goes through probate and you actually get your inheritance. So that whole process is called probate. Now there is a way to avoid having some assets going through your will, which enables those assets to actually pass without having to go through probate. And I'm not necessarily saying that this is a good idea. Um, this isn't necessarily going to save any money in actual like taxes on your estate. That's a whole other topic. I talked about it in another video and we'll put a link up to that video. It talks about how the assets in your estate are taxed. But basically, in Ontario and BC and Nova Scotia, uh, they're going to add a probate fee or tax on the value of your estate. So in BC, it is 1.4% on everything over $50,000. In Ontario, it's 1.5% on everything over $50,000. And in Nova Scotia, it's 1.695 on everything over $100,000. So roughly speaking in Ontario, if all of your assets add up to a million dollars, then the Ontario government is going to get $15,000. Now you're also going to likely be paying a lawyer a percentage of the value of the estate to actually do this. So that can add up, you know, to another few percent, plus all of the taxes. It can be a whole lot of money. So how do we avoid these probate fees? Uh, well, we can't completely avoid them, depending on your assets, your house. I mean, a lot of people try to do things with real estate by passing it on and ownership before, and that can get really messy, and I wouldn't really recommend messing with that. And, uh, but the simplest ways to do it is any account where you can name a beneficiary to that asset or beneficiaries, that means that it can flow outside of the estate and just directly to that beneficiary. A good example is an RRSP or a RIF or a LIF or a LIRA. Those can pass directly to your beneficiary if you name a beneficiary that is someone other than you know your estate or your spouse if you die and you have a spouse it doesn't have to go through the whole probate process if it doesn't go through all of that stuff then all of your assets can just flow directly to your spouse tax-free and then after your spouse passes away then it goes through the whole big process of getting charged and all of the taxes so an RSP, you can name a direct beneficiary. A tax-free savings account, you can name a direct beneficiary. A life insurance policy, you can name a direct beneficiary. 
which then the life insurance proceeds are going to go directly to this person, which is one of the advantages, especially in wealthier households where you can create sort of that, you know, secondary non-registered account that is a life insurance policy that can then flow outside of probate and not actually pay taxes on that. And then lastly, that I can think of uh, are segregated funds, which are basically kind of like life insurance salespeople can sell segregated funds. They're just mutual funds that cost a little bit more because they have like the insurance guarantee on them. But sometimes, and this is one time I might recommend using a segregated fund is if you're really trying to avoid probate or there's a reason to own one in a non-registered account inside of a business for this reason. Uh, other than that, I really don't like them that much, but uh, those are the ways to, to avoid paying this one and a half percent on those assets. But as I said, that doesn't mean that you should just go out right away and name a beneficiary for your RSP because you really have to look at the whole picture of how you want your estate distributed and if it's not going to be equal or you know some people are going to get some and others aren't then you don't really want to mess with this because it can really screw with how the taxes are paid and who owes what and can just cause more fighting than it's worth to try and save that one and a half percent. So definitely something you want to talk to somebody about that knows, that can answer these questions and then develop this estate plan with them so that you really know and your family knows what's going on and what to expect moving forward. So uh, anyways, thank you very much for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you haven't already, please subscribe, uh, comment if you've got any other tips or ideas. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Stay safe, everybody. Thanks.